Hey, hey buddy, Lane Fox, you mean to be. <laughs> we got, we got a new video from the Hottest Dog, dog and, and this is another, another special, special strike rebellion video. And, and this is called Where, where Did They Come From? from? In, In the, the thumbnail, thumbnail, there was everything was gray out except for Sandy. Sandy. Or Cindy. Cindy, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I've been a long time, time since I have seen Fanatic Candies. candies. Yeah. So, without further ado, let's begin. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you finally accomplished something that meant the world to you? Something that you thought was your life's goals, and in the blink of an eye, it all goes away? I bet that's how Candy feels right now. We had no idea about a war. And I certainly had no idea about shadow bears that kidnap people for whatever reason. That restaurant was all he would ever talk about. Ever since he heard of the name Freddy Fazbear. He always loathed his success with his cast of comedians and his huge ego. Now that I think about it, I don't remember a single friend of ours who even thought about the guy in a good light. We all hated his fame, but Candy stood out from the rest of us, because unlike us, he had a burning passion to overpass him, and a plan to do so. He went out one night, and he told me he had found somewhere where he can start his own burger business, and that he guaranteed it was going to be the first step to his fame. And I told him the day he actually opens the restaurant is the day I'll start working there full time. I would learn to keep my mouth shut after that. As the night got longer, it also got crazier. And Candy happened to pick on the wrong person, so we got the hell out of there. While we were being chased, three strangers came to our aid and managed to scare the guy off. After we thanked them, they explained that they were just bum street performers who barely got a penny. That's when Candy explained his plan to open a restaurant, and they could work for him, since it was the least he could do for them since they saved our lives. I was a little against literal hobos working for him, but they seemed trustworthy enough. Afterwards, we got the building from the landlord, who was literally a penguin. And weirdly enough, only Candy could understand him. That probably explains why we got an appointment with him as quickly as we did. <laughs> While setting up the building, <laughs> Candy decided to include some more members. Some were keepers, others we regretted. Poor Timmy. Other than that, things ran smoothly, and we were ready for opening day. Well, until... you know. But what still pokes at me every day is the day when I decided to ask Candy where he got the money to afford all of this. I never knew he had the money for all of this. So I just assumed he got a ton of loans. But when I asked, he quietly took me to the back room, locked the door, and told me not to tell anyone if he told me. He explained that while he was walking to the bar to meet me there, a group stopped him, all rabbit figures. They offered to give him the money that he needed, and when they gave it to him, as quickly as they came, they vanished. He didn't see much of their details, like, but he told me the leader of the like group was wearing a purple bow tie and vest, and had wide eyes that glowed a deep purple. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm making like these movies of like the last special strike. It actually took a long time to make, so go check out the other special strikes, rebellion, little teasers and sneak peeks that I did. Like a long time ago. So. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the next video. Bye bye.